Welcome all to this tutorial. Today we're going to actually start building our keylogger. I will make the basic and the most primitive of keyloggers. It will have some inherent logical flaws such as maxing out the CPU. Uh, what I would like you to do is go into the discussion section and simply suggest what would you like me to, what sort of abilities would you like me to give to this keylogger? Uh, how to hide it to for example somebody would say oh well I would like to hide it you know and somebody else could say well uh, I would like it to be able to have an emailing function of a sort another person could say well I would like it to have an FTP function I would like it to be configurable in this way or in that way and I would like it to use it for this purpose or that purpose uh, make sure it's so legal uh, when you ask me about it because I will not assist in any it in with anything that is against uh, regulation. So I'm giving you the freedom, the choice to ask me, and I can't promise that I will fulfill your wishes, but I will try. I will have a look if there are lots of suggestions, and I hope that there will be. I will pick a few, and I'll see what I can do. But you don't have to worry about it. I will add more functionalities over time as well. Anyway, let's go ahead and begin doing this, begin the, begin writing the code. So the first thing that we're going to need are two header files, so windows.h and winuser.h, because we want to be using uh, some functions which for which that those are the requirements. Anyway, so let's go ahead and type in char c. Uh, we will declare one character variable and let's declare another one which will be c1. A char can have, as I said before, a letter within it, but we can actually assign a number as well. So let this be a and let this be uh, 67, I believe is. This is the ASCII table. I will show it to you in a moment. And let's go ahead and write C out uh, C and oops and C1. And let's see what we will get. Can you guess it? Oh yeah. Well, no. Okay, that's fine. Uh, can you guess it? So this is A, and we are assigning a numerical value to a character type val variable. If you do this, uh, this will become this will be taken from the ASCII. This this is actually a numerical representation of a character from the ASCII table, and 67 corresponds to the lowercase letter A. So assigning A like this and assigning 67 like this, it's pretty much the same thing. Let's go ahead and see. Go, go, go. And let's have a look. Oh, well. <laughs> Total miss there, by the way. It's not 67, but you can see that it's not 67 here either. It's a capital letter C. So, uh, you are not expected to know the ASCII table by heart. Here I have one on the net. There are like a hundred of them. Feel free to look for it. We just go one step back. I just typed in 190 ASCII table. 190 because I want to get an extended one, but you don't need to type in 190. And go ahead and click on it. What was I referring to when I wrote 190? I wanted to have 190 numbers in it, 190 characters minimum. So I was hoping that Google would help me out there. Anyway, uh, lowercase a is 97, and 67, as you can see, is the capital letter C. Interesting, right? Capital letter C is 67. That's where I missed it, and the lowercase a is 97. So let's go ahead and change it. Uh, 97, press enter, wait for it, and there you go, a, a, no big deal, uh, not a bigger error, it's all fine and dandy, and it all works out. So as you can see, there is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on, to 255, 
you have each character has a numerical representation. The first call, the, you see the one that I'm selecting now where it says characters down below, it says zero, zero, null, and then null character. The third, co the third colon is a description where it says null character, start header, start of text, etc. Those are descriptive values. Those are not the values, those are descriptions, and on the left side, those are values. So, let's go ahead and you can find representations of ASCII tables all around the net, so no worries there, they're all free to look at as much as you want, you don't need to pay anything extra there. Uh, that's public domain, basically. Anyway, let's go ahead and delete these declaration uh, these uh, assigned values because we don't need them or want them at the moment and we don't need the C out statement either. What we need to do now is create an infinite loop and we could have created it because we want the keylogger to be running continuously so we don't want it to stop until the user actually stops it. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do that. I will type in while one. This is one way of doing it. This is another similar way of doing it. But if you want to create an infinite loop with a f four, you type in four, open, semicolon, semicolon, and this will create an infinite loop with four. So just something, uh, just a new piece of information that I wanted to give you. Also, uh, we will need a loop within a loop. So we will need nested loops here we'll need to use them in order to accomplish our goal. Our second loop will be defining the character, the range of characters that we are interested in. Why, you say? Well, are you interested in this cube at 219? Is this interesting to you in any way? Or uh, this pipe looking like thing at 205? Or this L thing or reverse T at 193 or something like that. Those characters are, I don't know, I guess you can include them, but I don't think it's such a good idea at all. Uh, I sometimes tend to, I think I include the ones 222, but I think that 190 should be optimum, even though you're gonna still include some uh, random characters that you're never gonna get, but doesn't really matter. Anyway, let's go. Let's go and open up uh, Eclipse back, and let's go back there. So, how do we spec? Before we actually specify the range, let me just show you what a nested loop is. So, if we type in here int i equals uh, zero, i is less than three, i plus plus. And here we will type yet another loop. So for int j is equal to zero, uh, j is less than, uh, just type in three, who cares? j plus plus. And for the sake of orientation, I'm going to put these uh, curly brackets here. So type in c out. Uh, I am se second, and then I want the value of j to be printed out as well, and then I would like a new line. Thank you. And now we'll go outside of the second loop, and we'll go into the first, and we'll type in c out. I am uh, first. And here we would like the value of i at l. There we go. So no big deal there. Anyway, uh, the logic of this is following. This for loop will begin. Once it begins, it will start to evaluating the conditions laid out within it. If it evaluates the true, so if i is indeed less than 3, it will start the execution of whatever code is within uh, within the curly brackets of the for loop. And with here we have another for loop which is nested here. 
What that means is that now the program will simply start executing this loop and it will not uh, it will continue to execute it until it finishes it. So what happens here is that this for loop starts evaluating this condition here and for as long as this condition here is true it's going to keep on printing this when it becomes false when j when j becomes greater or equal to 3 it will stop exit the second loop and enter the first loop again then it will print out then it will print this out i am first and go back to evaluating this condition if this condition turns out to be true again then this loop will start over and so on three times so basically this loop starts over as everything has reset it here j is again zero so it will repeat three times again let's just see quickly how that works out we'll just bring things out onto the screen no big deal there okay so let's go from the beginning it says i am second zero i am second one i am second two because the iteration goes uh, 0, 1, 2, so three times. And then it exits, as I said here, and it says, I am first. And then it's 0 here, so this is the first iteration, you can see it's 0. And then it starts the second loop again. And it starts to say, I am second, 0, I am second, 1, I am second, 2. So you see how the numbers reset. And then it goes, I am first, 1, because this is the second pass. And the second pass, again, we have the same situation. I am second zero, I am second one, I am second two. And so on and so forth until the end. Hopefully this uh, this is clear. If not, well, you have the discussions. I'm, I gladly answer queries there. Okay, let's put two semicolons. And open this up. Now we need to go ahead and basically specify the range of the characters that we would like to get so type in four and let's use the character which we have declared up above at the beginning just go ahead and use it and say that it will be equal to eight so those are the that's the beginning of our range and the very end of our range can be well, 222 let's say uh, let's be a little bit greedy although is there really a point for it at all yes actually there is there is a point so C equals to 8 C is less or equal to 222 semicolon and then C plus plus Okay, so let's open curly brackets. Now we now we actually do need curly brackets. They're not there for aesthetics or orientation or anything of a kind. And you see when a key is pressed, there is a system interrupt, and that system interrupt isn't isn't you can represent it as a number. So it's three, two, seven, six, seven. Let me just show you how that looks like. We need to create a conditional if statement to know when somebody presses a key on the keyboard and if somebody presses a key on the keyboard please do something with it so okay let's create a that condition uh, we need a function get uh, get sync uh, it doesn't uh, it's actually surprised that Eclipse doesn't help me out with these functions but okay sometimes they're a little bit difficult to spell out get key state pass in a C and after the C we're just gonna go ahead and compare it to minus uh, 3 2 7 6 7 and if that is true we are going to do something with it anyway uh, over here we have the range that we are checking so this for loop is conducting checks and this one is figuring out if the key uh, if uh, there was an interrupt so if there is an interrupt for a particular key then that key then we will do something with it what shall we do with it 
Uh, I don't know. Well, let's save it to a file. Actually, that could be that could be interesting. So once again, this is the interrupt. So if there is an interrupt, the uh, the uh, the character will be stored. The, the character will be stored, and we will be able to do something with it. So let's go ahead and type in of stream write open up this and let's just go ahead and create it in our uh, workspace directory so no need to go anywhere else uh, let's type in record.txt and there is one more thing that we are going to add type in ios colon colon app what we are specifying, what we are stating with this is that we don't want our file to be rewritten every single time somebody presses a key, because if we didn't specify this last part here, it would quite literally mean that when somebody presses a key, it gets recorded, and the next time somebody presses a key, uh, the file will be reopened again, and at that point of time, whatever is contained within that file will get overwritten with new content. Uh, every every previous key would get overwritten by a new key, which would be pretty stupid. So let's just do it like that and type in write. And now we're gonna what are we gonna write? We'll write the character C. That's it. Place a semicolon at the end, and that is literally all we need to do in order to start recording characters before implementing any sort of a before putting in any sort of a filtration system or anything of a kind, which we will absolutely need to do. Uh, press Control F11 to run this. Errors exist. Now, where is the error? Oh, ah, uh, okay. So we have not included the necessary header files for uh, this to be possible. What have we learned before? Include f stream. Very simple. Just forgot to include it. No big deal. Uh, it happens all the time. Go through it. Go through it. T -t 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 -t. Excellent. So the program is running. But you can't really see that it is running anywhere, can you? Can you? Uh, if you ran it from the console, then you probably could. But like this, since this is the console in Eclipse, you can't. It doesn't really matter because it is better this way anyway. We don't want to be able to see anything. However, I assure you that this is functional. So let's go ahead and type in type something into our I don't know, I opened up a CMD, you can open up whatever you want, and you can open up your browser if you want. Uh, actually, that might be a good idea. So let's type in yahoo.com, and I ha still haven't removed this infesting thing. Okay, and let's say sign in. Type in the username username and password will be password. I don't even need to click sign in or anything of a kind. Uh, we can just go ahead and open up our project. So once again your project files by default are located in C users and then choose the username of the current user here. Mine is creator. And then go to workspace and select your project here, which mine is keylogger. And select the file here. So it says here record txt. That's how we have named our file. And there you go. I have typed in Yahoo and it didn't record a dot. So we need to fix that. I don't know what the space here is. Probably a tab. Ah, it is a tab. So we need to. Uh, filter that through and make it better. So I, you see I've typed in username and password. I mean I haven't uh, I, this is yeah, let's use let's use a different example. Let's use uh, let's use John Doe. That will be my username and password. Probably a little bit confusing when I type in username and password f with 
when I fill username and password with username and password, get kind of stupid. Let's just open up record, and there you go. You have John Doe. There are some additional characters here, but we need to create a filtration system for this. Anyway, I bid you all farewell.